What's up, y'all? I'm Jmax. So welcome back to my channel. This is Jmax Reacts. Today, I'm watching The Breakfast Club react to Drake's surprise seventh album. Um, let's see what they have to say. It's about time. Why this picture? Drake has shocked people with a surprise album that came out at midnight. Honestly, never mind. He had posted that on social media, so people only had a few hours to get it together. And I guess the timing's good, right? Because the, everybody's watching the game, and then they're like, okay, right, we're still up. The album's coming out. People were trying to say he rushed to release the album because Beyonce was releasing, but I was not coming out until July. <laughs> so, well, oh, Ju well June, Ju yeah, July 29th. So we had time. But yes, he put out a statement as well. And he said, I let my humbleness turn to numbness at times, letting time go by knowing I get the, I got the endurance to catch it another time. I work with every breath in my body because it's the work, not air, that makes me feel alive. He also says, um, I purposely try to forget what went on between some people and I because I know I'm not a forgiving guy even when I try. Damn. My urge for revenge wins the game against my good guy inside every single effing time. I got plans I can't talk about with more than like four guys because the last time I shared them with someone on the outside, but that's another story for another night. So he said, I got here being realistic. I didn't get here being blind. I know what's what and especially what and who is by my side. Honestly, never mind. Dedicated to our brother V. Hmm. So it's 14 songs. The album is a little over 52 minutes and there's only, uh, the only name feature is 21 Savage. On the last song, yeah. Mm -hmm. On Jimmy Cooks, which we've been playing. He also put out a video, Falling Back, featuring a Tristan Thompson cameo. It shows Drake getting married to several different women. And uh, his mother's also in it, uh, by the way. And there's also a free YSL message that appears on screen. And that, of course, is in response to Young Thug and Gunna and other people being arrested on RICO charges in Georgia. Mm. So here's a snippet of that song, Falling Back, in case you haven't heard it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Doesn't feel right. We scrap it. We go home. It's done. No, no, no. It's a uh, it song. It's a good time. Video. You know, I'm ready right. uh, to settle down. I'm in love. So, hi for you. You want to do this? I get you right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please get me right. Yeah. yeah. Only get married one. You know, you're good. Mm -hmm. He marries 25 women in the music video for Falling Back. And so there you have it. I know it just came out at midnight, so I don't know if you guys have had a chance. I was listening to it on the way to work. Uh, it's like a dance. I feel like know. a Jersey vibe, uh, Baltimore house, Chicago house music type of album. Yeah, I don't mind the vibe. You know, the album to me, the vibe you hear when you're at a Beverly Hills luxury hotel. This is like a lobby <laughs> elevator music. It's the vibe when you sit what? in the lobby of the SLS what? hotel what? having some tricks <laughs> on a leather couch with the lights dimly lit. You got a suit on. <laughs> No tie, first couple of buttons on your shirt open, some slippers on, loafers, no socks. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, I'm, I'm never going like, I'm never gonna revisit the album again, but if it comes on when I'm in the lobby of a luxury hotel, I'm not mad at it. Now, Bill, you, like, wanna touch your nipples and like, bite your head fast. I didn't say all that, I didn't say all that. Billboard already ranked these the songs on the album. How, it just came out. I, I guess they've been working on it all night. <laughs> you know, that's their job. So they've probably been up all night listening to it and, uh, coming up with this, but what they have listed as the number one song is the Jimmy Cook song featuring Twenty One Savage. Of course, I didn't do record, everybody's though. gonna do that. Sticky. Well, like that's I, number I, two. I, that sounds like that sounds like Jersey all day long. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't I don't mind the vibe. It's just like elevator and lobby music. Like this that this that milk and honey pedicure music. You know what I mean? It's for the old <laughs> of us who like to get the buff no clear after a manicure. Now so academic what? tweeted out Drake saved twenty twenty two. Oh my yeah, god. SLJ Electronica slow. wrote Stop. Why Emmer is mad at Drake, this is jamming. So, I don't I, I, I don't mind the vibes at all. Like but I saw, people were definitely on Twitter saying negative uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. Because they were expecting something. So if your expectation is oh man, Drake's about to drop an album, you know. Future came out this year, Kendrick came out this year, you probably think he's gonna be rapping. So if he gives you an album like this, you probably gonna be disappointed. But for what it is, which is like I said, that music you hear when you at the Beverly Hills SLS in the lobby sitting in the bazaar having a drink, I think it's cool. All right, well you know we'll be playing some of those songs. And since you said um 
Kendrick Lamar. Is today his birthday? Mm -hmm. Yes. Kendrick's All right. Well, happy birthday to Kendrick Lamar today, too, since you just mentioned Kendrick. Hey, Dot, happy birthday. And also, when you're an artist like Drake and you've you, you, you've done it all, right? Uh -huh. Like you, you should be able to put out the type of music you want. Exactly. Right? Well, he's done something like this before, so it's not, you know. Thank you. Not that it's not normal, but he's put out an album like this that's different, that goes against the grain. I feel like he does do what he wants to do. Drake does what he wants to do. You can't be mad at him. He still gets busy. That doesn't take away that he gets busy. Oh, he just gets out of the room. Oh, people. Uh -huh. Well, that's like, yeah, you know, Jay but this, but the whole, I don't know why people. But literally, the whole album is like this, though. Like, I don't, like, you the said, yeah, I, I didn't hear no rap on the album. He did right. that, though. So, this is the last song. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, well, that is your rumor report. All right, thank you, Missy. Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Oh, uh, man, four after the hour. I need Glacier Valley Elementary in Alaska to come to the front of the congregation. Oh. Uh, they, they identify, uh, you know what, we'll talk about it. All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Okay. Um, and it's good. I'm always like interested to see what people have to say about it because this is one of the first times an album has impacted it. And not only did I feel compelled to go listen to it, but I felt compelled to go listen to it after I saw all the negativity. I was like, what the fuck did he do that has people so pissed off and up in arms that they just feel like it's a bad album? Um, and then I listened to it and I was just like, I like this. So I never forget though, well not, it's not like it, it just happened though. When I actually did see the images for it before I actually listened to it and I saw the executive producers, the, one of the first people listed was Black Coffee. And that was something for me. I said, okay, so this is probably very experimental. And then I saw the negative backlash and I was like, yeah, he definitely probably went in and, and, and did some incredible work with Black Coffee, who does the type of music that this album is. If you ever listen to um, Black Coffee's album subconsciously, it's very similar, um, except it's more singing than it is rap. Or it's, it's, you know, well, let me not say that because I also tweeted today in response to a lot of people getting pissed off about it that when you get to a point where you stop labeling people rappers or singers and you look at them more as recording artists, you will realize that the genre is more so attached to the art itself and not the person. And artists can do different mediums, different types, different everything. Um, Van Gogh, um, Warhol, all of them, they had their own dis like distinctive pieces, but you know they probably experimented with other forms of visual art back in the day. Music is art. Recording art. They're recording artists. <laughs> Nobody, for real, for real, in this day and age can just be classified as one thing. And Ali put a, uh, a record out today, too, that was very much um, rap song. You know, he did it all in one record. Um, Xavier Omar, who typically does these incredible R&B pop harmonies, put out a song where he was rapping today. And I was like, you know, we have to stop trying to classify and categorize everything. It does not have to be the same. And there are people in the underground who've been doing this shit for years. I love what I saw Dawn tweet today. She was like, now watch everybody jump on this house trend and this dance hall and everything that she's been doing for the last two years. And it's like, y'all miss it. <laughs> and I have friends talking about it saying, you know, people just mad because they never want to hear anything different. That's true. I can understand everybody else dropped this year. So your expectation of him is to do that. But if everybody else is dropping the same thing, why the fuck would he do that too? That makes no sense whatsoever. I get pissed off when these types of arguments come out because I feel like there's always a narrative of, oh, my favorite artist does the same thing and it's boring. All of a sudden y'all are dragging Chris because he's consistently doing the same thing in y'all's eyes. But then when they do something different, then you call them inconsistent or you don't support it or you trash it. And it's like, there's a demographic of people that actually like what they did. If you don't like it, just move the fuck on. Leave it alone. <laughs> it doesn't have to get a statement. You know, I'm so sorry you didn't get your Instagram captions off of this album. There are people like me who really do enjoy music of like house and like soulful pop that has this really atmospheric feel to it that's melodic. We don't always want to hear trap. Like that shit gets annoying sometimes. It's like nobody wants to be in their headspace all the fucking time. Everybody don't want to be in that deep R&B headspace all the time. Nobody wants to be in a deep solid rap stay all the time sometimes you got to be able to do something different and evolve i get so sick of hearing y'all and seeing y'all drag people for that shit it just makes no sense to me like why the fuck can't people evolve and be different <laughs> you know what i mean um but that's it my rant is over i actually enjoyed the album like i said i listen to black coffee daily he executive produced this project so it sounds very similar to his subconsciously album to me which is something i am in love with um I even have been playing around with making one of his songs my intro, but I can never find one that just matches. It just kind of is a little different. 
But um, this is actually, you know, a pretty good one. Shout out to um, the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne and Envy are gonna always troll things. But I love how they spoke negative, they spoke positively of how negatively it's being received. And then Angelie definitely did a good job with just saying, hey, this is what it is. Um, we need more of that. <laughs> Cause the shade room just opened a whole cesspool for them to actually trash people. Um, every time they did the same thing with Jack Carlos album. I still haven't listened to that one because of the negativity surrounding it and I'm a huge man, but either way, let me shut up and let me know what y'all thought about this one below. <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe until next time. Peace.